Welcome to another episode of Questions from Team Keep It Clean, uh, where you can ask me any NFL question you want to, and we answer it in a video just like this. If you ever want to be part of it, if you want to participate, you can send an email to teamkeepitclean at gmail.com, or for the Team Keep It Clean patrons, you don't have to send an email. For the patrons, you can send it directly on Patreon. And if anybody would like to become a Team Keep It Clean patron, you can go to patreon.com slash engravenvids, and if not, that is perfectly a o. Okay. Make sure you subscribe to the channel Turn your notifications on so you do not miss Not a single video, not a single episode Not a single anything No, no updates on the Ravens, you don't miss No questions from subscribe, you don't miss nothing Turn the notifications on and subscribe But also leave a like on the video Let's start off uh, today's episode With my guy Oreo Cookie Who actually has a big accomplishment of his own Before we get, even get into the question He said, uh, hey Engraven I have yet to congratulate you on the new addition To your family, oh no I appreciate it Thank you. He said, I have now lost 100 pounds as well. Man, you ain't playing, man. That's great. Like, that's great. Because I know that takes, like, a lot of, you really got to be motivated, but you really got to be consistent and persistent. Because I know, like, losing, like, five pounds, that can be a struggle. And it can be so easy. You could say, for instance, you, you lose five pounds. It could be so easy to get it back just like that. But and, and that can take an extra amount of concentration and focus just to get those five pounds down. But for you to lose 100 pounds, that shows exactly just how focused and dedicated you were to accomplishing your goal. I remember you told us months ago that you were on a big weight loss journey. And, I, and I'm glad that you obviously you down 100 pounds. You obviously been sticking with it and doing a good job. So that, that's that's great, man. You like like we ain't really got to do nothing else in the video. Like just we could talk about that and we'd be set like. You you made my day like hearing about that. That's great though, for real, man. I'm I'm serious. That's really 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 good, man. So shout out to you. Uh, but he said anyway. I have two questions about Justin Matabike. The first one is, what do you think the Ravens do about him? Do they tag him? Do they let him go? Do they do a tag and extend? I I think they'll try to get a deal done first, but I don't think Justin Matabike is going anywhere. It's obviously a possibility. It's always possibilities for anything until it ain't possible no more. But I don't think Justin might be get going anywhere. I, I think if they can't get a deal done, then he will get the franchise tag. I don't think that franchise tag is going to anybody else. No other pending free agents. No, I think it's going to Justin Matter BK and Justin Matter BK only. Uh, but he said, um, also, the other one is people are forgetting we have a new defensive coordinator. So are you at all concerned Justin Matter BK may not be good in his system, although it is similar, it's also different. And just like PQ, um, out oh that's a that's a good question and that doesn't even like we don't even just got to keep it mad bk with that one we could keep about a lot of the players because mike mcdonald's system was mike mcdonald's system and that allowed a lot of players to flourish it was a very unselfish system and that is something that is just underrated about mike mcdonald's defense it was extremely unselfish Guys were sacrificing stats so other guys could make plays. And this happened all across the board. All across the board. We've seen it so many times. It's very unselfish. So now, um, under Zach Orr, how is it going to be? It could be different. But I, I, I would think that Zach Orr would do a lot of the things the same as Mike McDonald. But, again, put his own spin on things. So it is a possibility that maybe there's a different guilt, but. Again, you follow into in some big footsteps. I was gonna say, but hey, maybe Zach Orr really specialized. Obviously, as a linebacker, he was a linebacker. Maybe he specializes in that, getting the most out of that unit. Uh, but at the same time, it's like with Mike McDonald, he got the most out of like everybody, like the secondary, uh, the linebackers, the defensive line. He got it out of everybody. Oh, that's why it's so frustrating that Ravens end up wasting this season, man. But anyway, um. So, yeah, that is something to be, I think it's something to be slightly concerned about. But with Justin Matabike, it's like you found his niche. Uh, you drafted him, what, four years ago, and he finally found his niche. This was his breakout season. Obviously, he had more of an opportunity with Calais Campbell being gone. Uh, he got to step up, and he he showed out big time. Um, so you want to keep players like that. You, you want players around that can get the job done. You want players around that can just – be big time contributors uh, in whatever defense it is. Obviously, you want players that fit the defense, 
Um, but it's going to be up to Zach or to make sure he continues to just try to get the most out of everybody across the board. But that's a really good question. Next question came from Keontae. He said, yo, Engraving, what's good? I hope all is well with you and the fam, my guy. Hey, I appreciate that, Keontae. He said, I think we should go after Zach Moss at running back. I like the running back by committee style. And with Hill and Keegan, I think he fits the downhill mode. But I have something and want to know what you think about it. Well, first with Zach Moss. I think Zach Moss will be good with the Ravens. I think I mean, he show he he know how to run that ball, and he felt more than at home running the ball at M and T Bank Stadium when he ran for all them yards and caught for all them yards against the Baltimore Ravens uh, when the Colts played him last year. But um, no, nah, I think he will be good, man. Zach Moss a sleeper. Um, that's why I was I was frustrated for him, but I get a. Colts had Jonathan Taylor, but Jonathan Taylor had been out with his injury. Zach Moss had been doing his thing. Jonathan Taylor gets back. Boom. They give him the contract, and Zach Moss is like, oh, well, okay. Man. So I, I was I was frustrated for him, so I, I get it. But anyway, uh, he said, I have something. I want to know what you think about it. Marlon Humphrey is my guy, but if we let him go, two playmaker guys I think that will come in and do a great job is Jalen Johnson and Jeff Okuda. Uh, what do you think? Jalen Johnson from the Bears, Jeff Okuda, he was with the Lions, right? Where is he at now? I don't know where he is now if, if he's not with uh, if he's with another team or something like that. Is he a free agent already? Not not that fast. It ain't no way. But I, I don't know what Jeff Okuda's status is, what team he plays for. So, um, oh, you know what? You know what people say when they when they say online, oh, you you couldn't just do a quick Google search? Oh, a quick Google search wouldn't wouldn't have had you looking so stupid. So let me see. Jeff Okuda. Oh, he's on the Falcons? Since when he been on the Falcons? What? Okay. He was uh being selected by the Detroit Lions third overall in the 2020 draft. So 2020, 2021, 2022, 2023. Oh. So, yeah. Oh, so he had his 50 option decline. He must have. Okay. Man. Since when is when is still play for the... Man, where, where I been at? Okay. Well, um, I'm not familiar with Jeff Okuda's game. I know Jalen Johnson, uh, he did his thing for the Bears. He was trying to get paid from Chicago, but it ain't looking like yeah, it's working out. Uh, they still got some time, though, but we'll see what happens uh, with him. But, I mean, no, with Marlon Humphrey, like... I don't think Ravens going to cut Marlon Humphrey. It's always a possibility. I don't think they're going to do it, though. But Marlon Humphrey, he had a down year. He was hurt. He was hurt all year. He was hurt all year. But even when he played, for the most part, he still played pretty good. I think with the cornerback position, I was just talking to him when I got Jason about this the, the other day. With the cornerback position, it's one of those positions since the ball doesn't come their way every single play. Uh, the ball, they're not involved on every single every single play. Um, so people can, it's hard, it can be hard for us to look at the cornerback position fairly. Because a cornerback could be having an amazing game. They could be killing it, crushing it, locked down, but then they give up one play and everybody's like, oh, they had a bad game. Oh, they had a terrible game. Oh, they, they, they did so bad. Oh, man, terrible. All the meanwhile, the, the, every other play, they've been killing it. They've been, they've been keeping their receiver uh, out the end zone. They've been keeping the ball away from the receiver. They've been locking them down. But they give up that one play. It's like, oh, man, you're terrible. You're sorry. You're washed. You're this and that. So, and, and I think that's been a lot of the discourse with Marlon Humphrey this year. Um, because people look at the Steelers game. Uh, when he first came back from injury and he gave up the touchdown to George Pickens. Um, it's like, yeah, he gave up that touchdown. But he was having a good game outside of that. Outside of that. I know the uh, the Rams game. <laughs> he gave up a couple plays, and now that, that one was looking like, "Ooh, I'm, I'm, what's going on, baby?" But um, I mean that that's how it's been with him. He he's been hurt, man, all year. So I, I do not think that he should be cut. I do not think that he will be cut. Anything is a course of possibility, but I just I, I don't see it happening. But um, so yeah, for so for as far as those other two guys that you mentioned, Jeff Okuda and Jalen Johnson. I don't even think it'll be a thing. Next question came from my guy, Gerard. He said, what's going on, Engraving? Got a quick but fire question for you. I've seen a lot of questions about Harbaugh leaving, which we know isn't, uh, which we know he isn't this year. That's true. He ain't, you know Harbaugh ain't going nowhere. Uh, my question is, do you think Lamar would eventually have enough leverage to tell Steve Bishotti that he wants Harbaugh out? Wishing you continued success, sir. Appreciate that, Gerard. Wow. That's a really good question. Um... That would take a lot of power because, you know, like Harbaugh, like he locked in with the front office of Bashadi with EDC, them being neighbors and stuff. Um, I can never say never, but it would take a lot. Like, obviously, Lamar, one of them guys. But uh, 
for him to have enough leverage. To, ooh, I don't know, man. That's that's a tricky one. That that's that's a that's a real tricky one. And I don't even know how to answer that. We have seen uh, players get head coaches out of there before, but that's when the relationships have just gotten real ugly. They gotten real ugly. I, I don't foresee the relationship between Lamar Jackson and John Harbaugh getting ugly at all. Um, they love each other. They, they they got a lot of love for each other. Um, both ways, John Harbaugh for Lamar, Lamar for John Harbaugh. Um, so I, I don't ever even foresee something like that even happening. Next question came from BB. He said, do you think the Ravens' defense will look different this upcoming season, or will they take what they learned from Mike Mack's dominant creativity and build off of that? Oh, good, good, good question. That kind of relates to the first question that we went over uh, when from Oreo Cookie when he talked about the possibilities of this defense just being different and players not being as good as they once were uh, in Mike McDonald's defense. And, and again, that's a possibility that it looks different. Um, but I, I think they'll take a lot of what they did before because you don't want to try to fix something that's not broken in this defense last year certainly was not broken uh and it was a mix of the scheme it was a mix of the coaching staff but it was a mix of the personnel as well so you put the right ingredients together all again then it'll equal the same recipe and he also said do you think um that edc will make a decision on Hobbs if mid-season ravens are a 500 team no not at all and he said ravens are losing a lot of key players and it will take a true leader to get them back to the afc championship and he said hashtag we should have kept mike mack so it's um with 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 that being said, I uh I yeah, with Harbaugh, that part, no. He I don't I don't I would do not see Harbaugh ever getting fired from the Ravens at all. Uh, even if they were five hundred, like and even that, if they were five hundred mid season, then they would just be like, Hey, turn this thing around. Fix it. Cause being five hundred mid season mean you're right in the middle of the pack and you got an opportunity to, to fix it. Um as far as uh It'll take a true leader to get them back to the AFC Championship. Oh well, yeah. It it'll take leaders and it'll take players and coaches. Just take just everybody, man. Because that's that's big. That's the final four. Like that's the final four of thirty two teams with seventeen regular season games, playoff games. That's the final four. You you made it really really far, really really far. Twenty eight teams not playing anymore, but you made it past twenty eight teams. So, yeah, it definitely takes some leaders to get back there for sure. And last but certainly not least, this next question came from my guy, Harry, uh, who is a Team Keep It Clean patron. Uh, and he has been since January of 2021. So I appreciate you, Harry. Much love to you. And thank you for the way that you've been supporting the channel. You always dropping gems and asking fire questions as well. Uh, so getting into his question, he said, how you doing engraving in the Team Keep It Clean family? I'm good. I'm sure we all good. And we appreciate you asking. He said, I uh, hope everyone is doing well or in, are in good spirits. I was watching a video today on potential cap casualties and just couldn't fit everything I had in my mind in the comment section. Trust me, I, I, I know how it goes, man. It's all good, though. He said, as far as how the cap works and as how the dead money goes, it depends on if it's a post-June 1st cut or not. If the person is cut before June 1st, all of their guaranteed money is accelerated and goes against the team's cap that year. If the cut comes out after June 1st, the guaranteed money gets broken up into what you would owe the player in base salary if they were still on the team for the upcoming season. And next year, you pay the remaining balance on their guaranteed contract. Ooh, okay, you broke it way down. Then. Okay, I appreciate this. He said, for example, if we get rid of Stanley, his cap hit is 26.17 mil. This year, uh, his dead cap is 17.84 mil. If it's before June 1st, we owe him all 17.84 mil. If we cut him after June 1st, we owe him 11 mil this year and the 6.84 million next year. Ah, so yeah, it, it breaks up like that. Cool. Hey, we appreciate this breakdown. He said, so with that said, I, oh my goodness, <laughs> boy, cutthroat boy. Watch how he set this up. You saw, so you see how he gave us the breakdowns, right? He said, uh, with that being so, with that said, I will cut Ronnie Stanley after June first and hope that we drafted a left tackle to replace him, or move Morgan Moses to the left tackle if none of our young players can step up to replace him. 
I, of course, will keep Morgan Moses because he has been solid for us. And even though injury that he suffered in November, he still played better than Stanley. Plus, he is on the last year of his contract. Let him play it out and be done. Marlon Humphrey and Mark Andrews shouldn't get cut at all and shouldn't be extended, extended again. Oh, okay. So it's like you gave him that grace. So you're like, hey, no, these do not cut them. But don't get him no contract extension. And then he said, um, that's the reason the salary cap hits are so high now. Pat McCarty needs to stay, especially if we get rid of Stanley. Pat Ricard, I would like to come back, so I would extend him to lower his cap hit, but I could understand cutting him. I could see them cutting and resigning Pat Ricard, but again, we'll see. He said Justice Hill could get cut. It's not that he's bad. I just don't see him as a difference maker on special teams or running back. I think we could get two rookies that could do the same thing at half the price, if that much. Your thoughts? Oh, that's tricky. I, I, I like Justice Hill, man. I, I like, um, I feel like with Justice Hill, uh, the more opportunity that he's gotten, uh, the better. Um, is because it's just it's had him out there more. Um, and, and I feel like he could be a playmaker, and he has made some plays for sure. I feel like especially catching a ball too. Um, with Justice Hill, the more that he's been out there, they obviously trust him a lot. Uh, they trust him at uh pass blocking. I know sometimes it's been a struggle there. It's been up and down, but um, with Justice Hill, I I, I like Justice Hill. Now as far as Getting rookies that could do the same thing. I mean, it's possible, uh, but that's one of those things that you don't know till you know. What it is possible um, with the Ravens in the running back position, uh, there could be big changes coming up because Gus Edwards, free agent, uh, J.K. Dobbins, free agent, uh, Justice Hill, and Keaton Mitchell, they the last men standing. So, um, and in the article that you referenced that that we talked about in that video with potential cap casualties with Justice Hill, they would only have like five hundred thousand. In dead money and they could get like i think two mil if they release them so anything possible till it ain't possible no more so i mean we just see how this whole thing shakes out